we need to be thoughtful before we act, before we make a decision, before we make a choice. Because we do our best, not when we're impulsive, but we do our best either academically or in the rest of our lives when we give it thought and we're logical about it. To be honest, I think the danger in this class for the instructor and therefore for the, for the students is not to get specific. That is to leave it in this general realm of this is logic and here's a, this is what Socrates said and here's a syllogism and life doesn't work like a syllogism. If it did, you know, life would be a lot easier. One and one isn't always two. Um, but the idea of planning, of outlining, of summarizing, of taking notes when you read, of taking notes when you're sitting in a class, and not just being a human tape recorder, but taking it in, digesting it, putting it down in your own words. That's a thought process. Critical thinking, almost first and foremost, leads us to seek knowledge. It is based on tapping into what most people would agree is something that's innate in human beings. We're curious. We have the need to know more. With the internet, with other ways of gaining information today, we need to be able to discern. That's a, a word that we use very often in critical thinking classes. We need to discriminate what is valid, reliable information, what isn't. If I'm given an assignment to research the Declaration of Independence, should I be looking at a, a political blog or should I be looking at a, an historian's work that's been vetted and reviewed? Uh, should I, if it's a political issue, we just had a presidential election, if I'm interested in gaining more knowledge, should I read about the candidates from just the conservative point of view? Or should I also read about it from the, a more liberal political view so that I can get a better balance? So the critical thinking leads us first to the awareness of there's information available to us, and then secondly, we need to discriminate when we find it. How do we judge that information? So we really work on this on, on those two levels of the practical life and of academia, with the emphasis on academia. It's, it's a, for lack of a better term, it's a help course, but it's an awareness course first. And I don't think there are many classes at the college level that can say that. So I think a lot of times the critical thinking class, when it's successful, it leads to much more self-consciousness, self-awareness, because you're stopping to, to think, well, I have this test next week. I have seven days to prepare for it. How should I manage my time in getting there? I have a paper due also in another class. The paper is in my major. I'm a French major. It's a French paper. This is an elective. How do I set my priorities now? We try to use true or actual school assignments for their other classes as examples of how to manage your time, study skills, note taking, summarizing is something we do a lot of. If you can write an accurate summary, it means you've understood the main idea and you've understood the most important details. You know, more and more today, college campuses and particularly you know, junior colleges offer college skills courses. And I think that my experience with them is that the problem in those classes is that they never get specific enough and they never really, they don't move into that skill area enough. They remain in that awareness area. And I think for most students, anything that can be put in practical terms or practical application, not just students, for all of us, is more meaningful. We're going to remember it more. We're going we're to exercise it more.